loved it. As well, too. It's definitely a classic. I like it. And um, what lessons are you trying to teach through the production to the children that you guys are? Performing? Well, some of the things that we're trying to teach the kids is the value of being polite and having good manners and ha being patient when you get frustrated and teaching kids about responsibility. And so what happens in this play is that the boy tries to keep stay responsible and the mouse tries to have good manners and we're just trying to teach kids some nice table etiquette yeah. and such. <laughs> um, are you excited about performing for children? Have you done a children's play before ever? Yeah, um, both Kevin and I have actually both done children's shows. Um, I did the children's show last year. And the thing that's very exciting about children's shows is that you get them involved with the show a lot and you talk a lot to them during the show. And the thing is with kids is if they have a thought that they want to articulate, they will do it. Kids talk during the show and that can be a lot of fun. It can also be kind of tricky to you can't really predict what they're going to do. Yeah, I'm sure it's a bit different than having an adult audience. Mm -hmm. Um, and you guys have public performances as well, besides just the mm -hmm. ones for children. When are those? We have two public performances on March 31st at 11 a.m. and 1 or 2 p.m. I'm not totally sure. 1 p.m. 1 p.m. And that's in, um, is it in Morris or is it the... It's in the Frederick Hall, which is in the basement of... Um, it's, it, no, it's in Morris Hall in the F Frederick Theater. Um, the theater is in the basement of Morris Hall. And um, how long have you guys been preparing for this? We've been rehearsing for about the past month. We started rehearsing this play on February 13th, so we've been working for a very long time, and it's been a very exhausting but fun process. Um, what's your, what's your uh, favorite scene or your favorite part about this production? That's a hard question. The, I just... Okay. I really like when things begin really getting out of hand because <laughs> at the beginning the mouse kind of makes a little mess and the boy is sort of okay with it. He just plays with the mouse and he has a good time, but he begins to realize that the mouse is actually kind of a problem. Um, but I would have to say that my favorite part of the show is when the boy reads a comic book called Jungle Man and the mouse acts out everything he's reading. It's kind of right in the middle of the show and it's about 10 minutes long. It's a cool little like feature in the show itself. Mm -hmm. So this show's um, basically a comedy. It's really it's, oh yeah. Has a lot it's of actually humor. um it's a very postmodern comedy. We're taking a lot of different sources of like comedic bits. Like we're doing, we do a little mirror bit where the mouse is trying to catch his reflection off guard because he thinks something's wrong, and we've taken a bit that was funny back in the early 1900s, and it's still funny today. So we use that, and we talk to the audience, and. It's, we use a lot of different styles of comedy in the show. And although it's a children's play, do you think it would still be enjoyable for adults or college age students to go see it? Oh, absolutely. We have a lot of little bits of humor that like, it's mm -hmm. kind of like a Disney movie in that it's going to hold the children's focus, but every now and then there'll be a little joke here and there that, that only the adults will really appreciate and have think is funny. And um, what are your costumes or the, the s <laughs> My costume's pretty basic. I just look like the little boy. They're actually based off the characters in the book. Okay. A lot of our research for the show has come from reading the book and learning about how children interact and play with each other. Um, but Kevin, who is the mouse, has a really cool costume. All right. And um, what age um, audience are they? I know they're bringing in children from schools around the area. Do you know what age is it? Is it younger children? I think it's anywhere from kids in kindergarten to maybe as old as fifth grade. So it'll mm -hmm. be a pretty active, lively audience. I'm sure it should be pretty mm -hmm. fun. Yeah, and we get wide ranges of audiences, anywhere from like 20 to 200 kids. Yeah, well, it sounds really fun. Definitely make sure to come check it out on March 31st at the public... Uh, performances and support um, all of our theater majors here at UWL. Thank you. Thanks. And now we're going to look at the perfect pets from the Cooley Region Humane Society. Come meet Sonny, a two-year-old male domestic short hair. He's very friendly and affectionate, and his purr will for sure win you over in no time. Here's Haley. She's a female one-year-old German Shepherd Husky mix. She's a beautiful, lovable dog that will brighten any home she's adopted into. 
Looking for a kitten? Well, then Kermit's the cat for you. He's a six-month-year-old domestic short hair. He's very playful and is looking for the perfect home with lots of fun things to do. And last but not least, here's Toby, a four-month-year-old lab. He does well with other dogs and has lots of energy and certainly a lot of love to give. To find out more about adoption for these pets or others, contact the Cooley Region Humane Society at 781-4014. Again, the phone number for the Cooley Region Humane Society is 781-4014. Five UWL wrestlers competed at the NCAA Division III Championships earlier this month. Lacrosse finished fourth as a team at the tournament. It is UWL's 18th top 10 finish in the national championship since joining in 1992. 133-pounder Adam Sheely started off the tournament strong with a tech fall, then a quick pin in a second match. He then fell to Westfall of Cole College in overtime in the semifinals. Sheely finished the tournament with a sixth place finish. Bebedo Ua, a two-time national champion, finished second at 141 pounds, losing a tough match in the finals by only two points. Ua finished, attacked his first opponent, pinned his second, and majored in the semifinals. Kevin O'Brien, a 165-pounder and the underdog of the tourney, took down two ranked opponents in order to finish fourth. Mike Schmidt, a 174-pounder pound senior, finished his tournament with a third-place victory. Billy Mayer, UWL's heavyweight, finished the tournament in fifth place after losing a close match in the semifinals. Overall, UWL had a great tournament and is looking to come back strong next season. The University of Wisconsin Lacrosse Gymnastics team will be looking to capture their 16th title while competing in the NCGA Championships this Friday and Saturday at the College of Brockport in New York. The top 10 individuals in the all-around competition will earn NCGA All-America awards. The top six in the vault, bars, beam, and floor exercise will earn NCGA First Team All-America awards. The next six individual finishers are selected to receive the second team NCGA All-America award. Last year, Krista, Krista Booman of, the UW, of UWL captured the title in the all-around and became only the fourth UWL gymnast to do so. She scored a 38.65, which was the second highest in NCGA history. Also last season, UWL Janice Swales earned a pair of All-America awards. She finished fifth on the vault and ninth on the floor exercise. Kendra Klein, Jen Anderson, Katrina Shush, and Tegan Orr earned one All-America last year. Coach Barb Gibson, who has led UWL to all 15 of their national titles, has been named the NCGA Coach of the Year five times so far and is looking to capture her very own title this weekend. Three UWL athletes were rewarded with WEAC Player of the Week this past week. For the baseball team, senior first baseman Jay Fanta hit .571 and went 16 for 28 in seven games with eight runs scored, eight RBIs, one home run, and one stolen base. Tim Verthing was named WEAC Pitcher of the Week. He went 1-0 with one save in two appearances last week. He only walked two batters while fanning eight. He also picked up a save versus Marion University. Verthine pitched a complete game over John Hopkins University last week. In the nine innings, he allowed 11 hits, five runs, two walks, and struck out seven. UWL pitcher Lauren Bears was also named the WEAC Pitcher of the Week. She recorded six wins and one loss in her last 10 appearances. She compiled a 1.72 ERA with 9 walks and 44 strikeouts in 40.2 innings of work. The Lady Eagles will play at Viterbo on Tuesday at 4.30, while the baseball team will take the field tomorrow at 11.45 in the Metrodome against the College of St. Scholastica. And that's all for this week's sports. Some good basketball going on tonight. Very good basketball. They're finally in the now down to the 16. Exactly. Sweet 16. I'm really excited to see that. We see Wisconsin, Marquette, and UW both both looking to make the lead eight. That would yeah. Wisconsin actually has a really good chance of even making it to the final four. I think. I think. Yeah. Really good I do that. too. All right. Well, thanks for watching this week's WMCM Week in Review. Make sure to join us next week, Thursday, 4:30, right here on campus, Channel 6, Charter Channel 96, and Digital Cable Channel 980. 989.